HDR explained, deconfusified science. Eight page script for this one. Hello, and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. And in today's episode, we finish answering a subscriber's question and unpack the confusion surrounding HDR. Before we begin, I want to say that while we use DaVinci Resolve in this video, the concepts we talk about here are universal to any software. Also to be clear, the aim of this video is to give you an understanding of HDR. We are not here to just mindlessly grade a clip for HDR delivery and leave you just as confused as you were when you began. Another reason I won't just mindlessly grade a clip is because HDR is a bit of a wild west at the moment for a few reasons. Problem number one is that my main display here is not HDR, which means I have no way of seeing what I'm grading on that monitor. I do have an Atomo Shogun Inferno, but to set that up as a second monitor with DaVinci Resolve, I need an interface from Blackmagic that connects via PCIe, and that costs money. Also, I am not dragging my PC from here in the office downstairs to the living room where I have a HDR display because of the next problem. Even if I was monitoring in HDR, my screen record software doesn't capture HDR, so I'd have no way of showing you what I'm seeing. And lastly, even if I was monitoring in HDR, and even if I was capturing in HDR, you may not necessarily have a HDR display to view it all on. And to round it all off, further confusion can be caused by all the different flavors of HDR. HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, HLG, Rec2020, Rec2100, these are all probably terms you've heard in relation to HDR, but if you're at all like me, you probably got confused by it all. So let's start clearing that up a bit, and to do so, we'll start by covering SDR, and we will cover one of the most common and standard forms of SDR, as most of us will already be familiar with it, and that is Rec709. Let's start with Gamma. Rec 709 was designed with a max brightness of 100 nits in mind, as that's where consumer display technology was just at at the time. It is important to note that some displays that cover the Rec 709 color space can be much brighter. For example, my monitor here is Rec 709, but it has a max brightness of 400 nits. But for argument's sake and to keep figures simple, we'll just call it 100 nits is the max brightness of Rec 709. So in terms of dynamic range, Rec 709 is very limited as it only has that max brightness of 100 nits. On our cameras, we may be capturing 1000, 10,000, even 20,000 plus nits of brightness. And what we've been doing to now is squeezing those massive values into a tiny color space, which leads to very compressed and unnatural looking highlights. If we look at the standard waveform in DaVinci Resolve, the bottom or zero is zero nits of brightness and 1023 is 100 nits or maximum brightness. Everything in between is subjective depending on the tone you're looking to achieve in your grade, but mids such as skin tones typically sit around the 50 nits range or 512 on this waveform. Now for color, let's take a look at the color gamut map. The full map is the colors our eyes are capable of seeing, and the smallest triangle inside this map are the colors capable of being contained and displayed by Rec. 709. So in short, Rec. 709 or SDR is capable of containing and displaying a small amount of dynamic range, roughly seven to nine stops, and a small amount of colors. Now let's talk about HDR. There are many formats of HDR, but there's all sorts of problems such as licensing issues and backwards compatibility. So again, to keep things simple, we will focus on HDR10. HDR10 is a format commonly found in consumer displays and its values are a good representation of where consumer display technology is at at the moment. These values are kind of the bare minimum that a display must be capable of to be considered a true HDR display. Values lower than this can be found on so-called HDR displays, but they're really only sort of HDR. Are you getting confused yet? So HDR10 and brightness. HDR10 can display 1000 nits of brightness. That's around 12 stops of dynamic range. This means that values that we would have compressed way down to 100 nits can now sit at much brighter values. And those values are often much closer to what our eyes would have seen had we been at that location. This leads to much more natural and truer looking images. Now let's jump into Resolve and have a look at the HDR waveform. 
You can access this by going preferences, user, color, and clicking enable HDR scopes for ST2084. Now this might look crazy at first, but it's actually very simple because instead of values being displayed by being zero to 1023, they are now actually displayed in nits. Zero, zero nits brightness and 10,000 is 10,000 nits of brightness. 10,000 nits, I thought HDR10 maxes out at 1,000 nits. Yes, it does. But this waveform is showing us the massive and future-proofed space of ST2084. ST2084 is ready to accommodate displays as they become capable of displaying brighter and brighter values. These are our HDR10 values and if we compare that to Rec. 709 you can start to understand why HDR is so powerful as it really starts to open up where we can place our highlight values. The last thing I want to talk about here is high dynamic range leading people to think brighter highlights and darker shadows. Zero nits is zero nits, dark is dark, black is black, you can't go darker. We are of course pretending that backlight bleed causing our shadows to get washed out doesn't exist etc. With HDR we don't get darker shadows, it's the brighter highlights that create the illusion of darker richer shadows as the gap between those values has now gotten greater. As for the color gamut of HDR10, let's go back to our color gamut map. We can see that the outer and largest triangle is Rec 2020. This is the color gamut for HDR10 and it is capable of containing and displaying far more colors than Rec 709 which again leads to more colorful and vibrant but most importantly much truer and natural looking images. Now that's just HDR10, all the other flavors of HDR just have slightly different specs and values. The last part of our subscribers question was the HDR mode in the nodes of DaVinci Resolve. This is accessed by right clicking on a node and selecting HDR mode. This again is very simple. All this does is makes the adjustments you make more suited to HDR content. Play around with it a little and you will see that the adjustments you make to your wheels and curves will affect the image differently compared to if HDR mode is not selected. The manual says, this setting adapts the nodes controls to work within an expanded HDR range. Practically speaking, this makes controls that operate by letting you make adjustments at different tonal ranges, such as custom curves, soft clip, and so on, work more easily with wide latitude signals. This does not have to be turned on in order to deliver HDR content. It's not like if you have one node accidentally set to standard that your delivery will accidentally be SDR. It's simply meant to make controls work more easily with HDR values. The funny thing is we have actually been working with HDR for a long time. Our cameras have been and still are capable of capturing far more brighter values and far more colors than we are currently capable of displaying. Our cameras are capturing a huge dynamic range and a massive amount of colors. In the past, we had to seriously compress those values into a tiny space. Now with HDR, we don't have to compress those values as much because the space is no longer as small. The gap between what we're able to capture and what we're able to display has simply shrunk. As time goes on, will that gap close entirely? Will our displays catch up to what our cameras can capture? And we'll both catch up to what our eye can do. Only time will tell. I want to highly recommend two videos to further deepen your understanding of HDR. And these are the two videos that when I did my research, I found the most benefit in. The first is by a channel called Realizations and this video is actually in HDR. So if you have a HDR display, you can truly view it. And if you don't have a HDR display, it still gives very good visual representations to give you the understanding of HDR. The second video is by the channel LumaForge and it's a talk given by the colorist Mark Bock. Mark does a particularly good job of explaining how most values, i.e. shadows and mids, actually should sit at the same points on your waveform and it's really only our highlights that are changing with this new technology. And if you do watch those two videos you will very quickly realize that I have just rehashed a lot of what they've said so credit where credit is due they are two great videos. There's a link in the description to both of them. So I hope this clears up some of the confusion around HDR. Ultimately what it boils down to is this is a new color space that is capable of displaying brighter values and more colors than we are used to. There is a small learning curve to do with where we now place our values within this new space. But after that, it's just back to having creative fun.
I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Let me know in the comments section below so I know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton, this is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.